Peace to the so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans. Because that's the reason... Shalom, Yashirala. It's your boy Nizar La Yahawa, aka the Iron Donkey. We out here in MacArthur Park once again, uh, speaking to the people, building with the people. So, um, you know, stay tuned. We are out here, man, faithfully, man, every Saturday, every day the Most High put the Spirit on us, man, to come do this, man. We out here, man. Brother's going in right now, so. A Mexican one has natural ingredients. Eso tiene ingredientes más naturales. El azúcar ese es mejor que el que es. Ajá. But aquí no tiene. Tiene high fructose corn syrup. Yeah, that's what I'm telling them that we're getting really sick now. We're getting high and high in blood pressure. It's not good for the body. But that's how we're all getting sick. And that's how we know we're living towards the last days. I don't drink soda. I drink water. You drink water. Yeah, and it's really like we have to try to drink as much as yeah. we have to drink and eat. Yeah, but you know, but you know what's the problem? Because you know what's the problem? Yeah, but we're here trying to educate people. Yeah, yeah. It's because we're here trying to educate people. 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 It's because we're here trying to Warm a little bit with the uh, 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 water and a uh, cup of uh, lemon juice and drink it. Then after one hour, you can have coffee, you can have uh, your pill, whatever you like. No problem. Yeah, no problem. I see it's good. You look good. That's all I did for my life. <laughs> you look healthy, bro. You don't look bad. You look what good. Thank God that you're walking. I kept working up to 65. I mean, I was going to go. Yo no sé en Guatemala, pero hay algo que dice que se llama así. Sí, sí. Yo hay cruce border y te quito el equipo de campo de escuela en Mexicali. Ah, pues yo soy de allá del centro. Yo era de allá del centro. ¿De Caléxico? Ah, del centro. Cerca de Caléxico. Y mire, Tapulón, el puerto de mar habitará. Será para él puerto de naves y su límite hasta Taidón. ¿Dónde se encuentra Juan? Ah, Porque ellos son de Guatemala, El Salvador, Panamá y todo eso. No, no vienen ah, no, donde vienen los barcos. Ya, ven, pero vienen los, los barcos, no hay paso de mano por el río de Panamá. Por el, no, eso es el, el, el barco. El canal Lucero. Ajá. 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 Pero, pero eh, ahí dice que, ahí dice que, que Sébila va a estar en un lugar de, eh, donde va a haber mar. Donde va a haber los barcos. Yes, sir. Okay, we're going to go to the room. Yeah, we're going to go to the room. Let's talk to you. Don't do it. 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 Don't
Did you get some literature? Yeah. Uh, small, uh, small, small pocket. The, the normal toxic people over here. We don't mind they come in. Oh no, he got one. He got one. We're good. You know, uh, talk to us about that. Yeah, we don't mind. I mean, you know, well, it was the, this bottom one, the bigger one. But no, it's all good. Yeah, because they want to be listening only then. Because it's weird, right? Yeah, I well, went to I went to the Catholic. Is that they use the faith of people to make money, to, you know. Exactly. You know, they, 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 they twist, you know, the palabras and they don't keep the commandments. You know who that is? Those are the Pharisees. Whoever it is, I don't care. You know. Shalom, Shalom, Israel. We are the Hebrew Israelites. I know many people have probably heard of it. The Hebrew Israelites. That's who we came to gather. According to the Bible, the so-called blacks, Latinos of indigenous descent, and the Native Americans of indigenous descent and Negro descent are the true children of Israel. The lost 12 tribes of Israel. Now we, we are the sovereign state of the northern kingdom. We come out to the Latino neighborhoods, the Native American neighborhoods, and we wake up our people and we show them righteousness. We tell them that they got to keep the commandments. And we show them why. Hello, hello. So, knowing that, we got to hear what this book got to say. Go on and bring that out. This is John, chapter 14. Verse 15, if you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and the, he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. The Bible says, if you love me, keep my commandments. I can come out here every Saturday and tell you until I'm blue in the face that God requires his children, the so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans, to keep the commandments, to keep the law, statutes, and commandments that was given unto one people, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's the only people that God told to keep these commandments. He didn't tell any other people. Out of all the families on earth, God chose one people, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the progenitors, the patriarchs of the Hebrew Israelites. We got the next one. First John, chapter 5, verse 3. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. For whosoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Right there. So I just showed you a second verse. Go ahead and read that one again from the top. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. For this is the love of God. A lot of people will tell you, hey, I love God. Oh, I love God. Oh, God knows my heart. I don't have to keep the commandments. I just love God. Well, the love of God is that you keep everything that he commanded you to keep. So if you are still eating pork, eating shrimp, eating crab, eating shellfish, you are not showing your love for God. You are showing the love for yourself. It says, according to the end times, that men would be lovers of thyself. So knowing that, the only way 
that God's chosen people, the so-called Blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans of indigenous and Negro descent, the only way that you can show God that you love him is by keeping the commandments. It's not by just doing what you want to do. Christ, if you believe in Jesus Christ, he never gave anyone a license to sin. Christ never told you to go out to the world and be a homosexual. Christ never told you to go out in the world and be a drunk on. Christ never told you to go out in the world and prostitute your sister, prostitute your daughter, prostitute your people. Christ never told you to go out to the world and eat shrimp and eat that filthy pig. How can you say you follow Christ, but you don't do anything that Christ did? According to the Bible, any man that says that he knows God, but does not keep God's commandments is a liar. And guess what? 90% of the people that say they love God are liars. They don't do anything to benefit God, nor do they know what God requires of them, which is okay. God told us, the Hebrew Israelites, the brothers who are woke, to come out to the byways and highways and wake up our people so it's all good. to be a rapist. 
God never told anyone to be a child molester. God never told anyone to be a thief. God never told anyone to eat unclean food. If you think that you can continue being wicked and all you have to do is believe in Christ, then you have deceived yourself and you will not inherit the kingdom of God. You will not be prosperous. He will not know you. You will be a stranger unto Christ. He will look you dead in your eyes and tell you, I have never known you. Leviticus chapter 22 verse 31. Therefore, shall we keep his commandments and do them? I am the Lord. Now that's the Old Testament saying that we should keep his commandments and not just keep them in our mind, but to do them. I just had a gentleman tell me, hey man, I know I have to keep the law. I know I have to keep the commandments, but I don't. I don't think I can do it. So it's not about just knowing what you need to do. It's about actually doing this. So you need to be moving towards doing what you need to do. We can only keep making excuses for ourselves saying that we can't do anything. We can only complain about things so much until we actually become doers. And saying that you love God, saying you want to be in heaven, but being a rapist, a child molester, a homosexual, drug. eating eat, a drug addict, eating pig, eating shrimp, shaving your face, abusing your woman, lying, stealing, you are not going to inherit the kingdom of God. That's right. And the kingdom of God was only made for who? The children of Israel. Don't let anyone tell you different. Open up the book of Revelation. It tells you 12 gates with the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. You don't see any other names on those gates but the 12 tribes. The kingdom of God is for Israel. Salvation is for Israel. So understand that the way that the so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans are going to receive that salvation, because we are the children of Israel, is by keeping God's commandments. This word, these laws, is not for the so-called white man. His spirit doesn't bear witness to do any of this. He's going to continue to perverse the rainbow. He's going to continue to perverse the, the shield, the lily. Go ahead and show the shirt. He's going to continue to perverse these things, to cause confusion, to make you feel like, I don't know what I should accept. Is it this? Is it that? Is it, is it bad? Does it mean this? Open up your damn Bible. He tells you what this is. He tells you what the idol was. He tells you what Moloch and Raphael was. He tells you about the golden calf that we were worshiping in the wilderness for 40, when we were there for 40 years. There's no confusion on that. He related Moloch and Raphael, so you understand that we were using that golden calf as the same thing as the Egyptian deity and the Assyrian deity. Look up Moloch and Raphael if you have any questions about this. Get some understanding on what those two names mean. Because he told us what the idol was that Israel worshipped. And it was a golden calf. And you're not going to see any golden calves out here. Got the next one. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 2. That thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments which I have commanded thee. Thou and thou thy son and thy son's son all the days of the life and thy life and that they Days may be prolonged. He said to keep the commandments and make sure that your kids keep the commandments and his kids keep the commandments and his kids' kids and his kids' kids keep the commandments. Never did he ever say that it would be okay for you to not keep the commandments. Never did God command you to be wicked. He never told you to eat carnitas. He never told you to eat shrimp. He never told you to shave your beard, shave your mustache off. He never told you to blasphemy the Sabbath. He never told you to blasphemy his name. He never told you to be a homosexual. He never commanded you to be a child molester, a drug addict, but he did command us to keep the law, statute, and the commandments. He did tell us to make sure that we got this message to our children. He did tell us to move in righteousness and to observe these things and to do them. Death ears. Death ears. The Valley of Dry Bones.
downtown LA. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 24. And the Lord commanded us to do all the statues to fear the Lord our God for our good always, that he might preserve us alive as it is all, all this day. See, that's what Israel's lacking right now, the so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans. We don't even fear God. We sell dope. We smoke dope. We rape. We steal. We do all these wickedness because we don't fear God anymore. But understand that at one point in time, the things that we do today, you would have been killed for. You would have been purged out of Israel. So don't look at just because you don't see instant judgment. That doesn't mean that judgment isn't going gonna, isn't gonna to come. Trust me, judgment will come to the two thirds of Israel. That's right. So understand that you can either move with righteousness and keep these commandments that God gave to us. Or you can continue to be wicked like the other nations, like the so-called whites, Chinese, Arabs, and all the other nations that fashion themselves after Babylon. Or you can separate yourselves and go into Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 17. And you shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord, your God, and his testimonies. And his statues, which he had commanded thee, more. How much more do y'all need? Keep the commandments. I can do this all day with my eyes closed. This is a million and one verses in this King James Bible that promotes that the children of Israel, which are the so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans of Negro indigenous descent, need to keep the commandments of God. It's all through the book. Now, you can continue to be lazy and say, oh, well, God knows my heart. Huh. Oh, if God knows your heart, he knows your heart is full of crap because you don't do nothing that God commanded you to do. You are deceiving yourselves. You are liars. All you do is love yourself. I can show you that you can't eat crabs, you can't eat shrimp, you can't eat pork, and guess what? Half of y'all will still go eat it. Check this out. How many people right now that can hear me if you love God, honk your horn. How many people love God? Can we get a honk? Honk your horn if you love God. Right there. One simple honk. You will honk your horn if someone cuts you off in traffic. You will honk your horn if you see your friend in traffic. You will honk your horn if someone ain't paying attention and they're texting and the lights are green. I said honk your horn if you love God. No one's going to honk their horn, not one honk. Let you know that our people are so disconnected from God that they're ashamed to even be associated with anything that's dealing with God. So stop going to church on Sunday. Throw your Bibles away. Take that cross off your neck. Burn that white image of Caesar Bozier off your arm that you're calling Jesus Christ. Stop going to church. You don't love God. You don't keep the commandments. Then what are you doing? Yeah, the Bible talks about if you have a tree, right, and there's a branch that doesn't produce any fruit, it's to be cut off and cast in the fire so hopefully another branch can come through and produce fruit that may be good. That's right. Right now, you guys aren't producing any fruit. You guys don't even got no damn leaves on your branch. But got your head high up, feeling good on Saturday, feeling like you got it made because... The so-called white man let you get a couple days off to go be to go do foolishness. And guess what? The white man's gonna want you there Monday morning sharp. And he's gonna continue to slave and oppress and vex the hell out of you. While the real men of the Lord are getting this truth, understanding how the white man works, we aren't bothered by it. Because we know what he got coming to him. You will never be able to enjoy the riches of this earth. If you continue to be wicked, you will never, ever be anything better than what the so-called white man wants to give to you because you are lacking understanding. The Bible does not promote men being dependent on the so-called white man. The Bible says don't beg and borrow. 
the so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans, we're always begging. We're always borrowing. According to the Bible, he didn't have that for us. He didn't wish that for us. There is more of us than the so-called white man. Why are we in this position? Because we don't keep the commandments. Because we don't keep the commandments. I want to give you the next one. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 11. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I commanded thee this day to do them. To do them. A lot of people that say they believe in God are talkers. You know the type. You see them Sunday morning. Oh, praise God. Oh, praise Jesus. And then you call them Monday and say, hey, can I get a little bit of gas money so I can get to work? Hell no. My bills is tight. No. But they claim to love God so much, but they'll allow you to lose your job because they don't want to give you a dollar. A lot of people that say they love God are hearers. You know what a hearer is? Someone that just hears the word, but never does it. You know the type always coming up with a great idea, but he never can put it to fruition. Because the man is not a doer. The man is a talker. The man is somebody that stands on the sideline. We come out here to get the blood off our hands. We know we've been wicked. We know that we broke the Sabbath many times before we came into this truth. We know that we have been missing feast days. We know that we've been slacking. So the way that we show God that we're sorry is by rewriting our wrongs. And how do you rewrite your wrongs? By keeping the commandments. Doing what God commanded you to do. You think just saying, oh, forgive me, God, and it's just wiped away? Show me your work. Show me your sorry. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 6. Therefore, thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and fear him. To walk in God's ways and fear him. Walking in God's ways is walking the way that he wanted us to walk. You think God wanted you to walk with a switch? You think God wanted you with some tight pants like a woman? You think God wanted you to be a homosexual? You think God wanted you to be on drugs, sleeping out in one of these parks? A lot of our families in this park. What are you going to do about it? Charge all these people to the game and just say, hey, they made a couple bad mistakes to hell with them. These are our people. How can you say that you love your people, but you don't do anything for them? Everyone's in a position with their, that they can come do something. But you guys are liars. You guys are snakes. The Most High is not dealing with you. Understand that if you see your brother lacking, you see your brother hungry, sleepy, tired, cold, and you do nothing for him, you are a vagabond. You are worse. You are an infidel. The Most High is not dealing with you. We love our people. That's why we come out here. We don't come out here to talk to the so-called white man. He's not bothered by it. Come to this park one day, and I challenge you, count how many white people you're going to count in this park. You're not going to count that many white people in here. But guess who you will count? God's chosen people. That's right! The so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans of Negro indigenous descent. You will see us filling this park up, needing hope. Needing a savior, needing a general, needing a commander, needing a messiah, needing a leader, needing a hope, needing a pathway to salvation, needing a light to see through the darkness. And that's what we come out here to do. We come out here every day that we need to until we see our people leaving this park, until we see this park being empty, until we know that our people are safe. Whatever needs to be done. We're not just out here to benefit off of anything. We don't benefit off of this. No one funds us to come out here. We spend our own money, our own time to come wake up our people because God told us to. He says, if you love me, feed my sheep. Christ said it best. The Hamashiach, our king. He says, if you love me, feed my sheep. How do you feed the sheep? It ain't a sandwich. It ain't a bag of chips. It ain't a hamburger that you was done eating and you said, hey, let me give it to a homeless person. This is what we feed the people with. 
the word of God. Because we don't live off of bread and water alone. But everything that proceeds out of the Most High, Yahweh's mouth, is what we live off of. The Most High God will provide food. He's provided shelter. He's provided adequate work for us to be able to suffice in this last captivity that the so-called white man has to say. We are doing okay. But we won't be okay until all our people are okay. And we won't be right until our oppressors are brought down low. The same amount of load that our people are at right now, but lower. Deuteronomy, chapter 10, verse 13. To keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. Again, huh? To keep his commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I commanded thee this day for good for thy good. For thy good. Saying that the law, statutes, and commandments that we're all here telling you to keep is a good thing. You smoking that crystal meth, smoking that crap, you molesting, you raping, you eating pork. Those things are bad. Fornication, those things are bad. So, who are you going to believe? The pastor in the church that tells you you can continue to be a homosexual or the men of the Lord that are telling you that homosexuals will be put down? They will be purged out of Israel. There will be no faggots in the kingdom of God. It serves no purpose. God didn't make no man no homosexual. Everyone has an opportunity to be right. Everyone has a chance. Don't let the so-called white man perverse our culture. Don't let the so-called white man perverse our heritage and make you think that this Bible promotes you being gay. This Bible is against the gay man. This Bible is against Christopher Columbus. This Bible is against Hernan Cortez. This Bible is against everyone that has oppressed the so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans. And you can put that smirk on your face all you want. But understand that those smirks on your face show what kind of character you are. According to the Bible, a man's attire and laugh shows who he is. And the so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans, you're doing too much damn laughing. Ain't nothing that damn funny for you to be laughing. What are you laughing at? That they're killing us by the bun loads? What are you laughing about? That our daughters are being kidnapped and sold into sex trafficking? What are you laughing about? That our men are on drugs and incarcerated and can't defend our neighborhoods like they used to? What are you, come on, what are you laughing about? Ain't nothing to laugh about our people being brought down low. The so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans are the greatest thing that could have ever happened to this country. Because this country would not be here without us. Even though the so-called white man has forced us to be his workers, to be his builders, his dancers, everything you could think of. We still overcome every obstacle he's thrown at us. According to statistics, we should be in jail right now. We should not have the understanding that God needs us to keep his commandments. But guess what? We have separated ourselves from the white man. We have separated ourselves from the Los Angeles School District. We have separated ourselves from all those things. Because it's better to obey God than man. And man, He's going to let you down all the time. Man will constantly give you his opinion. Why give you an opinion when I can give you what God says? Now, if you don't believe in God, then I don't got nothing to say. There's nothing for me to discuss about because we don't speak the same thing. We don't agree. So according to the Bible, I don't need to debate and argue with you. You know what I mean? All I need to know is that a brother is going to make sure that he needs to do what he needs to do. And keeping the law, statutes, and commandments is what we need to do. This system has effeminized the men. The Most High God is not for men wearing skinny jeans. The Most High God is not for men looking like women. The Most High God is not for a woman wearing pants. Women should not be wearing the pants like they're a man in the house. A woman should not be taking the position as a man, talking to her man, with mad disrespect. That's not scriptural. That's not according to the Bible. God wants our women to wear dresses. 
He wants our women to conduct themselves as righteous women of God. And how does a woman show her righteousness? By submitting to her husband. That's by right. being a good helper to her brothers. By being there. By being a supporter of the nation. Providing the things that the women have provided us with. So, you got the next one? Deuteronomy, chapter 11, verse 1. Therefore, thou shalt not love the Lord thy God and keep his charge and his status and his judgment and his commandment always. Always. Once again, there goes another precept. If, if I got a million dollars for every precept, I'd be a rich man right now. And if you're just tuning in, we are the sovereign state of the northern kingdom. We are the Hebrew Israelites. We are the lost tribes of Israel. We are the nine tribes. And we are here to let our people know, the so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans of Negro and indigenous descent, that they need to keep the commandments. They need to stop shaving their face. They need to stop dressing like women. They need to stop gossiping like women. They need to be men. Gird up thy loins is what the Bible said. Lace up your boots. It's game time. This ain't time to be dancing. This ain't a time to be laughing. This is a time to build up our men to prepare them to what's to come next. This country is going to go down. You don't know what's going to partake if you don't have understanding this book. You can continue going to college all you want. You can continue saving up your pennies. But understand, according to this Bible, this wicked country that has destroyed the children of Israel, who have raped the children of Israel, who have enchained, who have captive us, will be destroyed. This country will not continue to flourish. Look around. This is not the greatest country anymore. To, to a lot of people, it's never been the greatest country. But even the so-called white man knows that this country is not looking good. You got the next one. Proverbs, chapter 10, verse 8. The wise in heart will receive commandments, but a party full shall fall. Verse 8, verse 8. And he that walketh uprightly, walketh surely. But he that perverted his ways shall be known. Yeah, so this is talking about your Christian pastor. He's perverting the, the Most High's Bible. He's perverting the Christian church. You got a question, man? Yeah. He's perverting the Catholic and Christian church. He tells you you All don't praises. have to keep the commandments. He tells you you don't have to be All righteous. Praises. Yeah. He's fishing, y'all. Fishing. Word and told fishing. you that it was okay to enslave the Aztecs, fishing. the Incas, the Mayans, the so called Negroes. The white man thinks it was okay. He says, hey, that was the past. You blacks and Latinos and natives, forget about it. It was the past. But you better remember 9 11. You better remember the Holocaust. You better remember the Boston bombings, the Orlando nightclub homosexual shooting. He wants this to remember his fallings, but to forget our shortcomings and to tell us that it's the past. Well, guess what? The past repeats itself, and he is not done doing wickedness to the people on this list. The so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans, we go through the same curses. We are going through the same issues. We have the same enemy, the so-called white man, Chinese man, African man, all those nations are not our people, are not for us. Every time you give them a chance, they do something to show them that they're not our people. Psalms 105, verse 45, that they might observe his statutes and keep his laws. Praise the Lord. That we may keep his statutes, his commandments, his laws. Where is the confusion at? What else do you need? At this point, it's an overkill. I done gave you more than just two precepts. Now, are you going to keep the laws or are you not going to keep the laws? You know, it's like the movies. You're going to get down or you're going to lay down. Ain't no in the middle. The most high God says you're either going to be hot or you're going to be cold. And if you're lukewarm, he's going to spew you out of his mouth. And you're just going to be cast out. Just go back to doing what you want to do. Until this country gets burned up by fire. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 1. My son, forget not my 
my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For, for, the, for the length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth for safety bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So he just read that it says, Israel, so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans. The Bible just said to not forget his law. Don't forget it. And let thine heart, you know, latch on to the commandments. Let your heart do that. Everyone's saying about their heart. God knows their heart. Well, he wants your heart to want to keep the commandments. He wants your heart to be focused on keeping the law. He wants your heart to build up your faith. In the most high. That's right. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. The Bible tells us to not lean on our own understanding, to believe in God, to have hope in God. You know what your own understanding is? Is when I told you you can't eat shrimp and pork anymore, and you said, hey, man, well, I was told that through Jesus, man, that we can do it now, that the laws are done. Well, that's leaning on your own understanding because Christ said out of his own mouth that he never gave any man to, a license to sin. And if you don't know what sin is, sin is transgression of the law. When there is no law, there is no sin. Sin is not cussing. Fuck, shit, bitch is not a sin. Might not be good speech to use, but it's not a sin. You ain't going to go to hell. You ain't got to worry about it. But it might not be the best speech to use. Um, we know that Paul said that may, though I may be rude in speech, but not in knowledge. So sometimes you have to look past the appearance. You have to look past the tone. Give me Isaiah 58 and 1. And hear what a person saying. I'm telling you that you have to keep the commandments. I'm not telling you you have to sell drugs. I'm not telling you you have to be greedy. I'm not telling you that you have to eat pork. I'm telling you, you have to keep what God told you to do. Right there. Chapter 58, wow. verse 1. Cry aloud, fear not. Lift up the voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression in the house of Jacob their sin. So people say, well, why you got to come out here and yell? Why do you sound so aggressive? Because God told us to come out here again. That's right. He told us to come out here and lift up our voices like trumpets. We ain't, a, we ain't out here pumped up on emotions. We're out here doing what we're supposed to do. We're doing the opposite of what you're doing. While you're on the outside looking in, we're on the inside looking out. That's right. Shaking our head in disbelief. We can't believe that we have to be born in a time that our people are brought so low that they don't even know their history. You want to know who the Aztecs are? You want to know who the Mexica is? The Incas, the Mayans, the Cherokee, the Navajo? You want to know who these people are? Then come talk to us. The Bible gives us all those answers. And according to the Bible, the indigenous people of the Western Hemisphere are the true Hebrew Israelites of the Bible. The Bible is written to us and us only. The Bible was not written to Donald Trump. The Bible was not written to Christopher Columbus, his forefather. The Bible was not written to Hernan Cortez of Spain. The hell with Spain, the hell with England, the hell with any country that has ever put chains on my foremother's necks. The hell with any nation who has ever enslaved the so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans. Death to those nations. Death to our oppressors. Because that's what God said. That's not my understanding. That's what God said. He's going to destroy them. Bring it out. Why do you think he said vengeance is his? If he's not going to destroy them, what vengeance is? Vengeance isn't letting them into the kingdom, letting them be in rulership. That isn't vengeance. Vengeance is what they did to us. Pain. Destruct, destruction, the gnashing of teeth. That's what the other nations will feel. 
There is no salvation for Christopher Columbus and anyone that comes from him. The salvation is for the so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans of Negro and indigenous descent. I don't know how much I can stress that out. It's so bad right now that we had to make our own group, the sovereign state of the Northern Kingdom, to come to the Latino and Native American neighborhoods because even there's a division between blacks and Latinos. Not only are we not keeping the laws, but the so-called white man has made us feel that we're enemies. But we have the same enemy. We, we share the same jail cell. We share the same lunch line. We share the same county building, the same DMV. But he's made us feel that we're different. You speak Spanish, Sorry. I speak English. Sorry. That's bullcrap. Understand that that was a tactic that the white man has been implying on our people for many years. How did Hernan Cortez destroy the Aztecs? By linking up with the other tribes that were in Mexico. The so-called white man has been causing division amongst the so-called blacks and Latinos and Native Americans because it's beneficial for him. The minute we wake up and we come into the fold of the covenant and God says he will show mercy on us because we're going back to the wilderness and he's going to show mercy on us like he did with our forefathers in the wilderness. You better put away those emotions and that ill feeling towards your brother right now because we're going to be together again. So understand that we had to come together so we can go get the so-called Latinos and Native Americans because this truth is predominantly done by the Southern Kingdom, so-called Negroes, so-called African Americans. They have dominated the truth for many years. And they, most of them don't speak Spanish. So we've had to gather up our brothers that speak Espanol. We've had to get, gather our brothers that can come to the Latino neighborhoods and relate to the people. Sometimes you got to use different bait for different fish. And guess what? We're doing a great job because our people are hearing the message. We're not out here to make you feel like crap. We are here to make you feel great and let you know that God chose the so-called Black Latinos and Native Americans. He chose us to be a holy people. You know what holy is? Separate. He didn't tell you to go be a homosexual like the other nations. He didn't tell you to go eat pork and eat elk and eat eel and eat all those weird animals. He didn't tell you to go be like the other nations. He told you to separate yourself from them. Bring that out. Uh, this proverb, chapter three, verse seven: Be not, be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Depart from evil. You know what evil is. No one's a child out here. You think doing crystal meth, sniffing cocaine, is a good thing? You think making partnerships with the so-called white European man is a good thing? You think being a slave willfully is a good thing? You think being a rapist, a child molester, a fornicator, a liar is a good thing? It is a wicked thing. And that's wickedness right there. That's what Christopher Columbus did. He put his fingers off that boat and said, peace. And when he got off the boat, he didn't do peace. He said, I can enslave these people. That's right. They don't say no for anything. They're so they they're, they, they want to do everything for us. And guess what? That spirit is still on our people. You will break your back to please the so-called white man, but you won't even twist your finger to help your so-called brother. It's crazy. It's truly sad.
Let's look for it. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 18. For, for through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellowship, fellow citizens, with saints and the household of God. This is uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 18. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto Father, unto the Father. Verse 19. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and and are built unto, upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. So let it be known, man, that we are the foundations, man. We are the kingdom, the temple, the kingdom is within us. Until we have a physical kingdom, these are our temples. They asking why you got a tattoo on your neck. Because it's, now if you want to know that, it's because it's not against the law. Now, so knowing that the righteous men, the people that do these things are the foundation of the most high, the foundation of God's kingdom, we are commanded to build. We are commanded to wake up our people. We had a gentleman that's an Israelite talking about he's a Gentile. He said, you're no longer a Gentile. You are awoken. You are not a Gentile. A Gentile from another nation is a heathen, which we are not. So understand that we do what we need to do. We keep these commandments. That's what we do. We don't add to the commandments. We don't add to the laws. We deal with what the book says. That's right. We do our studies. We look up the Hebrew. We look up the Greek. But no, do we add anything to it. Nor do we just deal with all these other books to make something fit that we want. Do you know how many things that you can manipulate with different versions of the Bible? Guess what? We don't do it. We don't do it. We seek understanding. We go through these books to get understanding. Not to manipulate. Not to change, not to add. So, our people should really be focused on what they need to do in order to receive salvation. Don't worry about me. Don't pray for me. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Oh, I'm going to pray for him. Oh, bless his heart. Pray for yourself. Don't worry about me. Don't worry about him. He knows what he needs to do. You need to learn what you need to do to be a better person, to please the Most High God. Because we can go all day about what we do to please Him, but that's not going to benefit our people. Our people need to know what they need to do to benefit God. If you want to please God, keep the commandments. Stop keeping everything for your damn self. Stop worrying about, stop being so worried about how you going to do, what you going to do. Do what God told you to do. God never told no man to act like a woman. God never told no man to abuse his wife. God never told no man to go buy prostitutes, to go sell dope to his people. God never told you to do that. God never told you to eat shrimp. God never told you to eat that filthy pig. You doing that on your own. God never told you to keep Christmas. Show me Christ keeping Christmas. Show me anyone in the Bible celebrating Christmas because God told him to do it. Show me Halloween in the Bible. Show me Thanksgiving. All y'all some hypocrites. All you guys some liars. You keeping that. God says any man that says he knows me but does not keep my commandments is a liar. That's what God said. I got to go with God said. Pastor Porkchop next Sunday, he going to say you can do whatever you want. Just believe in Christ. Just believe in your heart. God says the heart is deceitful. What man can know it? So what you think your heart might be transcending to God is not what the Bible is correlating with. And I have to go with what the Bible says. 
the pastor, he is not Pastor Moses. He ain't Pastor Christ. The pastor ain't never promised you salvation. He ain't never promised you a pathway with no stumbling block. But guess what? The Bible did. And the Bible is, promotes that the so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans of Negro and indigenous descent need to get back to holiness, need to get back to separation, need to get back to his statutes, his ordinances. He told us to keep this forever. He didn't say just keep it until we get Christ. He didn't say that because I can show you in the Bible where Christ kept the laws. I can show you in the Bible where Christ says, I never told anyone to sin. God forbid that you break any of the laws. He told us to keep the laws. He told us to do the right thing. So what are you doing? What are you going to do? You're going to continue to do what you want to do until you see that sky crack open and you see something come out that you're not familiar with and it destroys you, destroys your kids. If you put in a Halloween costume on your kid, you are destroying your child. You are throwing them into the fire. That's right. Congratulations. You killed your kid. If you are celebrating Christmas, congratulations. You are offering your child as a sacrifice. All in the means of making them happy. Guess what? I imagine your child would be way more happy knowing that they'll receive salvation and peace than receive a gift that is going to eventually get old and break. Eventually they'll throw away. By next Christmas, it's not even any good. So what are you going to do? Are you going to keep making excuses? Are you going to keep saying, well, for the kids we do Christmas, for the kids we do Halloween, are you going to open up this book and see what God told you to do? Now, if you don't believe in God, then why do Halloween? Why do Christmas? Why do any of those things? If you're just a follower, then you should look for a better person to follow. Because if you're following this country, America, the United Snakes of America, the country that's built off slavery, the, the country that's built off rape, the country that's built off colonialism. Understand that the streets that you're driving on right now have the bones and the spirit of my forefathers under there. They didn't give my forefathers a proper burial when they came to kill the indigenous people, when they came to kill the Aztecs. They didn't gather our bodies and bury us properly according to the Hebrew customs of my forefathers, they built cement streets. They built buildings. They built the White House on top of our forefathers' graves. So you can continue to act like this country is your friend, or you can deal with some brothers like us that actually have a plan, that actually have an objective, actually know what we need to do. Because... We're not worried about North Korea. We're not worried about martial law. We're not worried about Trump. We're not worried about ancient aliens on History Channel. We're not worried about the Anunnaki. I'm not afraid of them. I'm not bugged out. I'm dealing with facts. While the rest of the people are dealing with sci-fi, X-Men, Spider-Man. The Bible has the real superheroes, the real leaders. We got men who slaughtered a thousand men with the jawbone of a donkey. Let you know how great a donkey's jawbone is. Strong. A donkey? Donkey. <laughs> We're talking about Samson, the Nazarite, that was born a Nazarite from birth. That's right. Could not cut his hair. Had mighty strength to deliver our people out of the hands of the Philistines. Where's our Nazarites today? Where's our superheroes today? Bunch of selfish people, man. Bunch of people hanging out, getting high, hustling, in the trap. Bunch of women working. Instagram is your God. Facebook is your God. You wake up in the morning, the first thing you do is check your social media. The first thing you, the last thing you do before you close your eyes is check your social media. Congratulations, you have an idol. <laughs> Repent. Repent. X videos, Pornhub, that's your God. Walmart, that's your God. Groupon, that's your God. iPhone, that's your God. Samsung S6, S7, whatever, that's your God. I need the new Jordans when they come out. 
Congratulations, you are now worshiping a tennis shoe made in China. According to the Bible, those things are idols. Those things are put there to be a stumbling block to the so-called Blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans. They're not there to bring us into righteousness. Those things aren't put there to wake you up. They're there to keep you asleep. So continue to believe the hype, continue to believe the lies, but whenever you're ready to get this truth, go to your Google God and type in Hebrew Israelites. Go to YouTube, type in Hebrew Israelites. Real men love their nation. Real men defend their people. Real men aren't selfish. Real men ain't just hustling so they can eat. Real men make sure all their people eat. Real men make sure all their people got jobs. Real men make sure all their people got somewhere to lay their head. This is real men. Any man depending off a woman, depending off the county, depending off the white man to feed him, depending on everything else but himself, is not a man. You're not a man just because you look like one. Men do men things. And men love their people. Look at all the great rulers of today. Look at all the great rulers of then, of the past. They defended their people. They were for the people. All y'all, man, y'all for yourselves, man. For yourselves. And I hope y'all go home and really evaluate this, man. If you weren't around to join the Black Panther movement, this is your movement. If you weren't around to join the Brown Berets, this is your movement. Huh. Don't look at the past and be like, damn, I wish I was there. I would have been in there. Well, guess what? We out here. You got a movement that you can join. You got a movement where you can eat. You got a movement where you can live, where you can breathe. Why you think Why you think we ain't out there protesting when cops kill people? Because we ain't got to protest what's going to happen. That's prophecy in the Bible. Holding hands saying kumbaya is not going to stop them from killing us. It's not going to destroy. It's not going to stop. You know how we stop it? by making sure that we can defend ourselves adequately and that we're prepared when they pull us over, when they stop me in the middle of the night. I need to know what I'm gonna do. I need to know what I need to do. You think I'm gonna let a cop just come and take my wife and rape her and enslave my children for 400 years? You think I'm gonna allow that? Hell no. But a lot of you people are afraid of martial law because you don't know what to do. You've been dependent on this country for so damn long, you don't know how to live in the wilderness. You don't know how to start a fire. You don't know about eating uh, locusts, crickets. Those are lawful things according to the Bible. We can eat those things. Those are lawful. You don't know about that because you've been sheltered. You feel like you need the so-called white man just to live. The hell with Christopher Columbus. He said the hell with the so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native American, our ancestors. How the hell can we be friends? He's destroyed us. We don't have nothing. We don't have no land to claim. Now he wants to call, well, now he wants to ask for peace. The white man only wants peace when Arabic terrorists attack this country. 9-11 happened over one people. The Boston Marathon over one people. But when blacks are being killed, Where's the white people to say that we're one people? For real. Where's the white people to say, police, stop shooting these blacks and Latinos and natives? For real. Where the hell are they at then? They're nowhere to be found. Nowhere. Nowhere. Go. Wake the hell up, man. But on that note, like I said, my name's Nazar La Yahawa. You can find me on YouTube. You can find me on Facebook. I represent the sovereign state of the Northern Kingdom. We're in Los Angeles, Dago, New York, New Jersey, Florida, Texas. Wherever our sheep are, you'll find one of us. Straight up. So on that note, I'm going to pass the mic over to my brother, Shalom. One. Shalom, Shalom. ¿Qué significa paz? ¿Paz para quién? Más para las 12 tribus de Israel, que somos los hispanos, los latinoamericanos, los morenos, que, que, que vienen en, en la esclavitud. Les vengo a decir de quiénes son, no, no somos del, del, del Estado soberano, 
del Estado soberano del Reino del Norte, eso es Kabar. El primer verso que vamos a ir es a, a Juan 8 de 32. Son. Y aquí nos vamos a enseñar en la Biblia qué es lo que está diciendo. San Juan 8.32 Y conocerás, conocerás la verdad en la vida. La vida los hará libres. Ahí está diciendo que la verdad nos va, nos va a dar libertad. ¿En quién saber el, quiénes somos? Y aquí la Biblia nos va a demostrar quiénes somos una de las tribus de, de, de las doce tribus de Israel. para ir a decir a los latinos, a los hispanos, a los latinoamericanos y a los afroamericanos de quienes son en la Biblia. Génesis 49, 14, y Sicar, hazlo fuerte y ese Recuesta entre los apriscos. Y dice, y dice que la tribu de Isaacar es un asno fuerte, un asno fuerte es un burro, que son de los más trabajadores, que los trabajan a todo tiempo. Ahí está demostrando que, que, que a los que les llaman mexicanos son de esa tribu de Isaacar. Número 15. Y vivo que... Yo, yo, el, el tiempo era bueno. Y vio que el descanso era bueno. ¿Qué dicen los mexicanos? Que nos gusta dar una, una, una siesta, que nos gusta dormir. Y, y eso es muy cierto, porque trabajamos todos los días. Trabajamos desde, desde que empieza la, la mañana hasta la noche. Y no dejamos de, de, de andar trabajando. Y que la tierra era de la tosta. Ahí está diciendo que la, uh, la tierra en la que está es muy deleitosa. Es uno de los mejores uh, uh, lugares, uh, tiene los mejores paisajes, tiene, la, tiene todo verde. En las junglas ahí tenían lo, lo, los aztecas sus, sus templos. ¿Y por qué no estamos en esos... A tiempos ahí de arriba, porque fuimos en contra de las leyes que nos que, que nos dio nuestro Dios. Para decirles una de las de las cosas que, que íbamos a hacer. Bring it out. Y para eso estamos aquí saliendo a los lugares donde están los, los hispanos y diciéndoles en español qué es lo que de dónde son y dónde vienen. Bring it out. Otra de las características de este clan que es que íbamos a saber los tiempos, las las, las, uh, las estrellas, que, que la estrella y aquí está otra de la de la tribu de este clan. Uno crónicas 12, 32 de los hijos de Isiclar, de cientos principal en los tiros, en destiendos, en los tiempos en que si bien sabían que el Israel vivía. 
el día así es por el dicho se cuan seguían todos sus hermanos ahí está diciendo que la tribu de este car que somos aztecas que sabíamos qué es lo que estaban diciendo las, las, las estrellas las nubes y todo y que todos nos hacían caso cuando cuando les decíamos era tiempo de guerra y cuando era tiempo de descansar y esa es una esa es de la tribu de, de esa car que son los mexicanos los latinos también los hispanos es lo, eh, porque teníamos entendimiento de las leyes por eso hicimos nuestros propios calendarios el año el año nuevo en que celebramos los aztecas este mismo año en que empiezan los de, de los de los de los israelitas que es entre marzo y abril y eso es una de las cosas que nadie sabe o no quiere saber y quiénes son y, y para que te regresen a, a su dios viajaba y aquí para que vean que, que nosotros estuvimos en Egipto éxito número uno uno, estos son los nombres de los hijos de Israel que entrar en Egipto con Jacob. Cada uno entró con su familia: Rubén, Simeón, Levi, Yura, Ishikar, Subalar, Benjamin, Dan, Naftali, Gad, Eliezer. Todos las personas que la nacieron y Jacob fueron centra, centra y José estaba en Egipto. Ahí dice que nosotros entramos a Egipto, las pirámides en México, en, en los mayas, en los, en los incas. ¿Cómo, cómo nos, nos, nos sabíamos cómo hacer esas tribus, esas, esas pirámides? Porque nosotros estuvimos en Egipto haciéndolas. Nosotros fuimos los primeros, ahí las, las hicimos para ellos. Acá venimos y las hicimos para nosotros, para nuestros dioses. Después de que, que nos fuimos otra vez, fuera de las leyes de Dios. Y es por eso que estamos aquí, en, en lo más bajo, con todos los demás. Y, y, el, y el enemigo de nosotros está en lo más alto. Porque. Y por no seguir las leyes, aquí también nos dijo que nos, que nos iban a, a, a estar en lo más bajo. Tuturánimo, 28, 15. Pero es con y con si no harás la voz de la voz de Dios para procurar cumplir todos sus mandamientos y sus estatutos que, que yo te estimo hoy, que pondrían sobre ti todas estas maldiciones. Madi, y te alcanzarán. Esa, esa última era alcanzarán. Eso significa que no importa que nos fuéramos hasta el otro lado del mundo, que fue que, que, que lo que hicimos, pero nos iban a seguir esas leyes. Y que otra nación se, se, se va a venir acá en contra de nosotros. No importa de dónde nos vayamos, no importa dónde estemos. Vamos a seguir en estas maldiciones porque no estamos siguiendo la ley de Dios. ¡Es Dios! ¡Te contra de una nación de lejos! ¡De la iglesia! ¡Lejos! 
Yo me temo que vinieron los españoles, vinieron los, Ingl los, de, In los de Inglaterra, vinieron los, los, los franceses y nos iban a dominar. De la tierra que vuela como Aguilar, nación su, cuya lengua no entiende. Antes no hablábamos el español, antes no hablábamos el inglés, hablábamos el náhuatl, que es derivado del, del hebreo, de los israelitas. Tuturánimo 28, 68 y Dios de Arbaro Arar por ver el Egipto en aves por el camino de cual te ha dicho nunca más volverás. Er, y, y, Estarás vendidos el, en los nuestros bandidos enemigos, por esclavos en las clavas, en no, en no habla Juan, quien os compre. Bueno, no hay problema con eso. Está, no, por está, eso. Está, está aprendiendo el español del hermano. Um, ahí dice que íbamos a ir en aves a Egipto, donde, donde no, 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 no hemos ido, donde no, no, no íbamos a regresar, porque Egipto es, es uh, considerado uh, un lugar de, 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 de esclavitud y que nadie nos iba a comprar. Por eso fue lo que le pasó a los aztecas, a los indígenas de estas tierras, a los mayas, a los incas y a nuestros hermanos de, 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 de la tribu de, de Judá, de Benjamín también. Nos trajeron por naves y nos llevaron a otros lugares también, nos llevaron a España, nos, llegaron, nos, nos llevaron a diferentes lugares de todos estos lugares. Y, uh, para, para que sepan que, que el hombre blanco no es el, no es el, uh, uh, el que es de, la, de este libro. Somos, uh, son de piel morena, de piel de bronce. El Pascualito, número uno, quince, catorce, su cabeza y sus caderas eran blanco, como blanco lana, como nueve, sus ojos como lama de fuego, en su pues, semejantes, el bronce, Buenido, brunido, huetrecate con el un porro, es tu voz como es, es tu expreso, quien me hizo mucho agua. Ahí está diciendo que Jesucristo es un, es un hombre de... de, de, de de piel de bronce, no es no ese hombre blanco que tienen en sus iglesias. Que no es, no es un hombre que tiene, que, que este es el, el de ojos ojo, ojo, azules con uh, pelo café o pelo no sé qué otro color tiene este güey. Um, uh, que, que su voz era fuerte que su voz era fuerte y como un matar en el agua. Por eso, vamos a darle un poco. Vamos a darle un poco. Buenas tardes, destinos. Eso es correcto. Ahorita yo estoy practicando mi español contigo. Mira, tú eres la tribu de Israel. Tú no sabes eso porque la iglesia no diga eso de ti. ¿Por qué? En la Biblia, el de Dios, si diga, tú eres la persona de Israel. En el problema 
con en la comunidad de latinos es porque tienes 35 mil diferentes iglesias. ¿Por qué? ¿Por qué? ¿Tú no quieres buscar por qué tienes 35 mil diferentes iglesias? Eso es un problema. Una persona si diga eso, otra persona si diga eso. No puede dar en eso, pero eso sí puede. Eso es un grande problema. El problema es porque nadie quiere hecho de la ley. Nadie quiere practicar la ley de Dios. En aquí, en Mateo 5, no, Mateo 5, 19, si digues, tú necesitas practicar los mandamientos, la ley de Dios. Yo no vivo aquí. Mi amigo aquí si vive en San Diego. Mi amigo aquí si vive en Alaheim. Y yo vivo en West Los Angeles. Y yo vine aquí para ayudar a ti. Pero Mateo 5, 19. Mira. San Mateo 5, 19. De manera que cualquiera que quebrate uno de estos mandamientos muy pequeños y así enseñe... La más pequeño mandamientos. ¿Qué es eso? Nadie aquí sabe por qué. Su si diga te llamo de Dios. Pues no, tú no sabes los mandamientos. A los pequeños mandamientos. Pues tú diga te llamo de Dios. Eso es un problema. Aquí 35 mil diferentes iglesias. En nadie está diciendo eso. Eso es un problema. Yo soy aquí para ayudar a ti. Yo soy practicando español para ti. Eso no ayuda a yo. Yo hablar en inglés. Pero mira mis lenguas. Eso de Dios está ayudando en mí para ti. Yo soy aquí para ti. Repetiste, diga de Dios, porque el tiempo no es tu amigo. Todo está, todo está pisando ahorita esta profecía en la Biblia. De Dios si viene, y yo no estoy aquí jugando contigo. Yo te llamo a ti, y si te llamo de Dios. Escúchale la voz de la Dios. La Dios es diga el arrepentimiento en la ley en la Actos 3.31. Yo no tengo mucho tiempo aquí, so yo quiero diga eso es muy importante. Roman, Roman 3.31. Agárrenle, por favor. 3.31. Mira. Romanos 3.31. Ah. Luego, por la fe, invalidamos la ley. La ley. En las iglesias, 35 mil diferentes iglesias. En dos está diciendo o pasando la ley. Nadie está practicando la ley. Eso es el problema con las iglesias. Todas las iglesias es pura mentiras. Pero todo es... Todo es... Te amo, te, te amo. Pero nadie quiere practicar la ley. Otra vez. Roma 3.31. Luego por la fe, validamos la ley. En ninguna manera, sino que confirmamos la ley. Y si tienes fe, pues tú necesitas no pasar la ley. Y tú no sabes, tú eres la, la tribu de Israel. 
Tú no eres una yentao. Tú no sabes eso, porque tú no estás buscando. Mi amigo, señor, está estudiando todo día. En iglesia, 35 mil está diciendo mentiras. Tú necesitas estudiar. Tú necesitas estudiar porque todos están elegidos. Diga eso, por favor. Mis palabras caen en oídos muertos. Cuando el diablo pasar, otra vez, por favor. Mis palabras caen en oídos muertos. Todos están muertos de nada, están escuchando y estoy diciendo a ti. Yo estoy aquí practicando español contigo, pero tú no... You don't care. Yo soy aquí si estás diciendo tú necesitas practicar la ley. 35 mil diferentes iglesias de nadie quiere practicar la ley. Cuando de Dios en Jesús Cristo practica la ley, tú estás diciendo, oh, yo no quiero practicar de diez, pero te llamo Dios. Mi próquita. Yo soy aquí para diciendo, tú necesitas practicar la ley. En Esturia, aquí está en la Biblia. Mira. Procura con diligencia prestarte a Dios aprobado como obrer, obrar. Que no tiene que avergonzarse. Que usa bien la palabra de la verdad. Pero habla. Para, Verdad. Verdad. So mira, Israel, latinos. Native Americans. Indios. Native Americanos. Tú eres las doce tribus de Israel. A las 35 mil diferentes iglesias nos está diciendo que Dios te amo a ti más de todas personas aquí. La iglesia está diciendo mentiras. Y creen en un hombre. Creen en un hombre. Don't believe me. Study the word. You children of Israel, so-called blacks, Latinos, Native Americans. You are, in fact, the lost children of the house of Israel, and you don't even know that. Nobody is studying this word. Nobody's taking the time. You're worried about going to work. You're worried about how you look. You're worried about everything else, but you're not worried about studying. And I'm not saying that it's not good or it's bad for you to dress nice, but you got to make sure you're following the least commandments, which is having fringes, or like my brothers right here, they choose to wear tessels. I'm not going to be here to judge my brothers or what they do. That's the most high job, but they're studying themselves to be approved. I'm studying myself to be approved. So we can get this salvation. Until then, my name is Stephen the Watchman. God bless each and every one of you and repent.